college football coach passing Amos Alonzo Stagg. In the state of Alabama, you either root for Auburn or for Alabama on this day near the close of every college football season. In the city of Birmingham, you can drive down any street, in fact, in the whole state, probably any road, and have no competition on the highway. Everybody's inside to watch number four, Alabama, take on pesky old foe Auburn at Legion Field in Birmingham, where we may have an all-time record crowd today. And this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things for 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. By light beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. By Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products you can trust. And by General Motors Corporation, designing and engineering cars for a changing world. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. And it's my privilege to be part of what's going to take place here in Birmingham this afternoon. Anytime one has an opportunity to watch someone step into history, it is indeed a privilege. And that's exactly where Paul Bear Bryant is today. He's tried to shrug it off. He can't. He made the bed. He's willing to lie in it. And this afternoon, as I said, if he gets past Auburn in this ball game, then he will have 315 victories. And that puts him all along. Now, considering what has happened in Pittsburgh, the Alabama Crimson Tide are in the hunt for a national championship, perhaps. Certainly, in the game against Auburn, they are in the hunt for a conference championship share with the University of Georgia Bulldogs. There's all kinds of emotion wrapped around this particular day in this part of the country. Bears boys have come back, hundreds of them, from Maryland, Kentucky, Texas A&M, and certainly from Alabama. Some of those who have competed against him have come back to participate and share in this moment. One of those men is Frank Roy, who is our expert analyst and commentator here today. And Frank Royals, I know you have a lot of feeling about the man. I know you have a lot of feeling about the moment. Keith, I sure do. I want everyone to know how honored I am to be here today. And I want to take this occasion to speak for all of the football coaches of our time. Uniformly, we believe in Mayor Bryant, and when he does set this record, we'll be proud and happy for him. It will be Roll Tide and War Eagle. It has started about 10 o'clock this morning. Even before they had opened the stadium gates here at Legion Field, they were in groups growing larger all the time, shouting their favorite supportive cry. This is one of those games that as much as any embodies the basic flavor of this piece of Americana college football. Keith, you're right. Uh, the people of Alabama believe in football. They, they, it's a part of their life. And when you're born in Alabama, you're either an Alabama fan or an Auburn fan. And when you move in, you've got to make the choice. But this is just known as a good old country grudge match. No other way to explain it. Paul Bryant came out of the cotton fields of Arkansas, if you will. But the young man who faces him today, Pat Dye, as the head coach of Auburn, came out of the cotton field. It is a common thing to find in this part of the country, young people who grow up into be something of sports legends who have come from spare beginnings. You and I had breakfast this morning with Pat Dye. His attitude, his philosophy, his demeanor was most interesting. It really was. You could tell that he was sold on being the football coach at Auburn University. He's going to be a, a, quite a football coach, Steve. He's got a great salesmanship. He can communicate, and he loves his people. And here comes the time. With a record of 8-1-1, one one, looking for a share of the SEC championship, possibly looking at a share, if not a claim, on the national championship, going to the Cotton Bowl, and coached by the Bears. There he is. I talked to him earlier today, and he made a very simple human comment. He said, I'm scared to death. The next 
roar that will knock the leaves off the ridges and the hills of this part of Alabama will be heard when the planes come. The Tigers from Auburn come into the stadium. And it seems a team with an almost impossible challenge. It is, Keith, but then when you talk to Pat Dye, as we did this morning, you could see the gleam in his eye. He believes that his team has got a chance to win. He recognizes that we, they don't have quite the talent of Alabama, but he said our players will play hard, they'll play together, they'll give their very best effort, and with a few breaks, we'll take it right down to the wire. Here they are, the Tigers. It's a very young team that has grown better and better and better with each passing week. And you know who trained that guy? Paul Bryant. But Paul Bryant has a habit of beating his students. His record is imposing in that capacity. And we'll see today what this young man, Pat Dye, can do against the old mentor, the Bear. It's going to be a day to remember. No matter the final score, Paul Bryant will dominate the day, and we hope you will enjoy it. Alabama's season record reflected there, ranked fourth in the UPI coaches poll and AP. They lost to Georgia Tech by three times. Their last outing two weeks ago, a most decisive win over Penn State at State College, Pennsylvania. Auburn started out with a win. Upset by Wake Forest, lost to Tennessee and Nebraska. 1-2, then lost one. Lost by only four to Mississippi State, then won two more, and their last game defeated by the Georgia Bulldogs. Auburn will kick off. Joey Jones is deep for Alabama. Dave Flanks kicks it off for the blue-shirted Auburn Tigers, and the game is underway. It is Lenny Patrick on the far sideline, bringing it back up the field, and the Tigers swarm him at about the 23-yard line. So on a 60-degree afternoon at Legion Field in Birmingham, it is jammed to its ultimate capacity and perhaps even then some. Alan Gray will open at quarterback. When the teams were being introduced, the starting lineups to the crowd by the public address announcer before the game, Alabama's quarterback spot was unannounced. That's the way he introduced it. But it is Alan Gray, the senior from Tampa, starting with Joe Carter, Ken Simon, and Paul Carruth behind him out of the wishbone. And it goes to Simon, number 20. And Simon is walloped right at the line of scrimmage. Here's a look at the people in the backfield. Gray, 6'2", 184. Ken Simon, 6'1", 198. Paul Carruth, a sophomore, 207 pounds. And Joe Carter, 189 pounds. They're all from this part of the country. Jesse Bendross, speedster and wide receiver. With Joey Jones in there right now. Joey is only 5'9", 165. A sophomore from Mobile, he can fly. They stay on the ground out of the wishbone with Simon carrying the ball. And the Auburn Tigers swarm again at the line of scrimmage. Joe Beasley, 247-pound tackle. Mike Adcock, a 242-pound guard. Steve Mott, a center at 247. Doug Vickers, right guard, 243. Mike McQueen, 243-pound sophomore. And Bart Trout, 6'3", 225, tight end. The ball is on the 24, where it is third down and nine, and Alabama spends a timeout early in the ball game. So the Tide, looking at the Auburn defense, which is moving around, decides to spend the timeout. Alabama spending the time out to talk about its offensive alignment against an Auburn defense that's dancing all over the place. Here are the people who are playing the defense for Auburn. Hardy, Nelson, Altman, Humphrey, Jackson, Skutak, Martin King, Drinkard, Harris, and Dominey. Right now, a five-man, six-man front up there for Auburn. And they go inside with it, and the Plainsman had him. 
Ken Simon carrying the ball again for Alabama, and the Blue Shirts jump him at the line of scrimmage, and the Auburn defense has done its job. Dow Ockman, the man, the nose guard that brought him down. So Alabama, on three plays, at the line of scrimmage in their first possession, gained one yard, and Simmons is in the punt. Malcolm Simmons averaging just under 44 yards per kick. It is not a particularly good punt. It does take an Alabama bounce. However, it is picked up by the Auburn man on the move. It is... Dead run. He may go. No, it's caught from behind. It's Chuck Clinton from Pensacola. Chuck Clinton of Pensacola electrifies the Auburn side of the field and scared the Alabama folks half to death. Keith, it's a brilliant run. Surprisingly enough, Auburn had the block on. Watch number two. Watch the block at the top of your screen. Knock the Alabama man inside, letting Clinton run down the boundary. Good faking, good footwork. Stepped, nearly stepped out of bounds. I guess he didn't. Finally gets brought down by number 27 of Alabama. Clanton had returned only four punts all year, so you can see how they've been moving around at Auburn, finding new places for new people to play as Pat Dye in his first year makes changes. And on the first carry, on first down at the Alabama 14, George Peoples, the fullback, hits in there and gets a yard. Let's watch another view of this electrifying, brilliant punt return by Chuck Clanton, number two. Look at the Auburn block. Look at the convoy that they have. That's a beautiful punt return. An excellent running by Clanton, number two of Auburn. Second down and nine from the Alabama 13. The quarterback takes it down the line to the 10-yard line. That is Ken Hobby, number 13 at quarterback, brought down by Mike Pitts. The Auburn offensive unit, Joe Sullivan, got the starting call. George Peoples at tailback. Lionel James is a halfback. He is a sophomore. Mike Edwards is a halfback. He is a junior. Christopher Woods is the split end, and he is a sophomore. Joe Sullivan is back in now as Pat Dye alternates his quarterback, the so-called designated quarterback system. It is third down at about six, and it's into the middle for the ball carrier, Ron O'Neill, a 245-pound freshman out of Atlanta. And he gets it to about the eight. For Auburn up front, David Jordan, 245-pound tackle. Charlie Garnham, a 215-pound guard. Not very big. Bob Hicks, the center, 228. Keith Euchre, 262 at guard. Pat Arrington, 255 at tackle. And the tight end is Ed West at 6'1", 231. Auburn now on fourth down will go for the field goal. From 25 yards, Al Del Greco out of Joe Sullivan's hold. It is in the air. And he missed it. by the failure of the Auburn Tigers to come away with some points on a glorious opportunity. They had the ball after the punt returned by Clinton on the Alabama 14, and they come away empty. Indeed, we've seen many times the Alabama defense rise to the occasion when they have their backs to the wall. And again, we watched the field goal. Let's see. Evidently, Keith, he didn't compensate quite enough for the ball on the right hash mark. Some of the Auburn players were complaining, but... The judgment of the officials that was outside when it went through there. Great defensive play as the Alabama quarterback Alan Gray tries to get out of there and Edmund Nelson, a senior from Tampa, number 99, got him. I think we should mention for the viewers that both teams used the wishbone. Pat Dye coached Alabama and both, both coaching staff feel, Keith, that it could develop into a defensive struggle early in the ball game. They're so familiar with the style of play of each other's offense. Earlier in the day, in case you missed it, Penn State stunned number one, Pittsburgh, 48 to 14. The ball is on the 17, second down and 13. Gray keeps it, and he's loose. Down the sidelines with some help. He gets one block, and now they get him all the way down at the Auburn 20. The Alabama offensive unit sealed off the left side. Auburn was overcommitted, and Jeff Jackson finally ran him down as Gray goes for 63 yards. It's a reverse option play, and Auburn did not have anybody assigned to the quarterback. You can notice that number 46, Joe Carter, catches up with Gray, number 14, is going to make a key block right here, letting Gray go on down to the 
20-yard line. The option play still one of the most exciting plays in college football. Ball is marked at the Auburn 21. And so now here is Alabama with an opportunity to put some points on the scoreboard at 10 minutes and 28 seconds to play in the first quarter. 63-yard run by Alan Gray. Joey Jones comes racing onto the field for Alabama. Now he's got to hurry and get off because the play has already been called and Jesse Bengross lines up at wide receiver. The ball goes to Carruth. Then Paul Carruth hits it over the right side inside the 20, gets it near the 18, brought down by Danny Skutak, a senior from Opelika, Alabama. That's down near Auburn's campus. What we're watching for the defense is counter strategy, knowing Alabama's style of play. Pat Dye was the coach there for nine years, moving around, jumping, trying to confuse the blocking assignments of the offensive line of Alabama. Now they've got a double wing set up. Different offensive set for Alabama. As Gray goes to the right side and gets around the corner, inside the 15 to the 13 before he is wrestled down. And Zach Hardy, a senior from Hueytown, Alabama, makes the tackle for Auburn. You all know Hueytown. That's where the Allison brothers come from. Ball is sitting on the Auburn 13, where it is third down and two for Alabama. No score here in the first quarter. Auburn had an opportunity. Missed the field goal. It's the roof. Paul Carruth, 6'1", 207-pound sophomore from Summit, Mississippi. And he is not pleased with the play. I think you could probably read what he said. It had to do with the offensive line. Well, the offensive line is the real key in short yardage, and they didn't come off on the ball, but they still, through good running by Carruth, made the first down. Paul Carruth, to me, looks a great deal like Major Ogilvy carrying the ball who played here for four years. What Keith means by that, he doesn't have great speed, but he's a very determined, sure ball carrier, good blocker, just a hard-nosed football player. With a knack for sticking it in the end zone. Yes. It is a first down, as you saw, for Alabama. The ball is just outside the Auburn 10. It goes inside the number 20, Ken Simon, and the junior out of Montgomery. Got pretty good surge on the right side of the offensive unit that time and puts the ball inside the seven. Keith, in all of my time in coaching, as we look at Bear Bryant's coaching victories, it's 314, Lonzo Stagg, 314, tied. In all the years I was coaching, the wishbone attack inside the 10 yard line had more success putting the ball in the end zone than any offense I've ever seen. Three running backs back there who can all block and carry the ball. Outside it goes to the roof, to the corner, to the goal line, short. The hit, Greg Carr, sophomore from Birmingham, kept him out of the end zone. He may have a first down. They'll move the chains over. The ball is just short of the goal line. It could be a first and goal for Alabama. Just that much. Eight minutes and two seconds to play in the first quarter. The officials for today's game, James Harper, the referee, Pete Williams, umpire, Bob Gaston, linesman, Ed Dudley, the line judge, field judges, Bill Stanton, and Charlie Horton, the back judge. It is third down, and the ball is about a foot away from the Auburn goal line. on the board on an 80-yard march and Peter Kim who suffered a 
serious injury during the course of the season. Now back and ready to kick. Young man from Honolulu. Nails it out of Gray's hold, and it's good. So Alan Gray goes for 65 yards on that 80-yard march, and Alabama takes the lead. That's Legion Field in Birmingham with the Goodyear Blimp America, Captain Don McDuff out of Anson, Texas, and our cameraman Bill Sullivan, and there's your first quarter score. With seven minutes and 47 seconds to play, Alabama taking it in from 80. And here's the kickoff, Terry Sanders hits it, and Clayton Buford is the deep man, but he won't get it. It goes to a short man, Ed Graham. And Graham gets out of there, and look at this. Once again, Auburn gets very good field position, as it looks like they're handling themselves well on kick returns today. The history of the Alabama scoring drive to take the lead. One thing that uh, we should mention that Alan Gray has not been noted for his running as a quarterback. He only had a 2.5 average for the season, but he made a great run when Auburn failed to pick up the quarterback on the option play. Now the Tigers come up out of the wishbone. And Sullivan is the quarterback. Outside it goes. And Willie Howell, junior from Thomaston, Georgia. Didn't get much out of it. Christopher Woods goes in at a split in position. In Hobby goes in, a freshman from Tipton, Georgia, as the quarterback. Keith, he's the best passer of the Auburn young quarterbacks. Break the ball, put a man in motion. That's Howell. Pressure's on, the pass is off over the middle, the pass incomplete, intended for Christopher Woods. So there's your first pass of the afternoon by Auburn, or either team for that matter. Here are the comparisons of the offensive stats for the season. Alabama way ahead in rushing, a little bit ahead in passing, obviously way ahead in the total. Auburn is very limited in their offensive personnel. Joe Sullivan is back now at quarterback for Auburn, and he alternates quarterbacks depending on the circumstance on the field. And Sullivan on a roll. The younger brother of Pat Sullivan, who won the Heisman at Auburn, gets it across the 35, and he is brought down by Thomas Boyd. Weak side linebacker, it'll be fourth down, and Auburn will have to punt the ball. One thing that we should mention, that Alabama's pass defensive group, Second era outstanding. Two all conference players, Harris and Wilcox, and two very fine players, Castile and Perry. Alan Bollinger is the man in the punt. Joey Jones deep to receive it. The 10 white shirts up front, now they peel off. The kick goes to Jones, not too deep. At the 25. And coming downfield, number two to make the play, that is Chuck Clinton who made the big punt return run for Auburn early in the going. It was a 39-yard punt, and he lost two on the return. Walter Lewis is now in at quarterback for Alabama. Ricky Moore is in the backfield, the big freshman from Huntsville. Jeff Fagan, number 35, is in there as is 25. Lenny Patrick. Lewis back to throw it. Sets up his screen. The pass is caught. And the gain is out to about the 28. Jeff Fagan, 35, made the grab. And Bob Harris brought him down for Auburn. Alabama has a Jim Bob Harris in its secondary. Auburn has a Bob Harris, and an Alabama man is shaken up on the play. Looks like it's Fagan. Vern Lundquist is with us today, and he's standing right now with a fellow named Joe Namath. We've got Joe Willie Namath here, Jerry Pate, the pro golfer. John David Crow is also on the sideline. Joe, what, what is your most fond memory of the Bear? Fond memory? Not let the me, suspension, I don't think. Let me come back on the team at one time. Now, Coach Brian uh, taught, teaches his players, taught me a great deal about how to live life, how to get along. You know, he teaches us things out in the football field, but that carries over to everyday life. He, he's just a good friend. I love him, and... Uh, all of his players do it. Well, it's a great tribute to him that so many of you have come back here. Hey, we always like being around him. You know, he, he's just a great man. We enjoy visiting with him. Okay, Joe, thank you. Keith? All right, Vern, thank you. 
Fagan drops off the field. Second down and six for Alabama. From the 27, the ball is given off to Ricky Moore. Fumble, fumble, and he puts a white shirt on it. Mike McQueen, the right tackle. Bob Kayavec, one of two players dropped from the team for a curfew violation. Gary Bramblett, the other. Both of them offensive linemen. I think we should mention again that Bear plays a lot of players in each ball game. He's got his second backfield in the ball game right now. Ball is just outside the 31. Third down and three. It's Lenny Patrick. Dives for the yard marker, and I don't know if he made it. Just depends on the spot as Tim Drinkard shoves him out of bounds. As we told you, Penn State defeated number one Pittsburgh today, 48 to 14. A startling score. And on Thursday, Texas beat Texas A&M 21 to 13. They are a yard short. Yesterday, many of you I'm sure saw. Miami beat Notre Dame, and Florida is hammering Florida State in the fourth quarter, 35 to three. Winner of that one will go word. The Peach Bowl is yes. Number two, play West Virginia. Rush on, kick is away. Penalty flag thrown downfield. Clinton has it, and there's nothing but white shirts around it. And they got it. We've got 12 men on the field, Keith. Alabama or Auburn? Auburn has 12 men on the field. 45-yard yeah, punt. The ball is down at the 23. And it's up to Alabama to accept or refuse. Tennessee and Vanderbilt have a wild one going, don't they, in the fourth quarter. 38-34. Tennessee is going to the Garden State Bowl. Boston College be held across today, 28-24. 15-yard penalty when you play 12 men against the opponents. 26-0, Houston. Oklahoma over Oklahoma State at halftime by 20 to 3. Obviously, the 15 yard penalty will give Alabama a first down. Too many men on the field. Receiving team. Alabama will retain possession. That's why maybe Pat Dye and his staff were so excited on the sidelines. They were trying to get somebody off, huh? What it appeared to be. 48 yard line. First down for the Tide, and Lewis to throw it. He throws the pin ball, and it's just barely high, just off his fingers. Dendros is the wide receiver. Remember that the wishbone really threatens the run. You can see the wide open area that he has to operate in. And then you see break to the outside. Bob Harris, number 28, the strong safety, is trying to cover him. Ben Gross has him whipped. The ball is off his fingertips, incomplete. Tim Clark has come in now, replacing Ben Gross on second down and 10 for Alabama. They lead 7 to nothing in the first quarter. And Lewis will put it up. He goes for Jones, and Joey can't get to it. At 5.07 to go in the first quarter, it will be third down and 10. Lewis, Walter Lewis, the, the present quarterback for Alabama, as we look at Bear Brown, a little bit disturbed right now, 30 10. Walter Lewis is by far the best passer that Alabama has. He's completed 27 out of 57 for a 47% average for 579 yards and five touchdowns. Third and 10. This is a running down for Alabama. Nope, they don't throw it. Down back inside the 30. Lost his footing. Auburn had four people coming after him. And Lewis trying to set up. Couldn't do it. Loses 19 yards. And next Saturday, we'll have more football for you. A doubleheader as Georgia plays Georgia Tech, closing out their seasons. And the traditional between Army and Navy from Philadelphia will wrap up the day for us at 3.45 Eastern Time. Simmons kick is away and it's a dent. Clinton backs up to his 21. Looking for a little help and can't get much. He had one man down there helping him. That was not enough. He got back to near the 30 after a 49-yard punt, an 8-yard return, 4.27 to play first quarter. 
The defensive front for Alabama, Pitts, Klein, Lyles, Edwards, and Wood in their big. 267, 257, 248, 215. Secondary and linebackers there, Jones, Boyd, Castile, Theron, Wilcox, and Jim Bob Harris. Auburn with the ball, just short of the 30. Alabama leading 7 to nothing, and Hobby is the quarterback for the Tigers. It goes to the second man outside, and Lionel James, who's been their leading runner, a sophomore from Albany, 5'6". What was the line Pat and I had about his backfield? As we watched the option, Pat Todd told me, he said, uh, in our backfield, we've got a wide receiver at halfback, a midget, and a nose at the other halfback, and a nose guard at fullback. Clayton Buford now comes in. He is the third quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Buford quick comes off that snap in a hurry. He pulls it down, runs for the corner, and Boyd uh, and company, the two linebackers, Robbie Jones and Thomas Boyd, bring him down. It'll be third down. Alabama defense has always been awesome. As we look at uh, number 97, Robbie Jones. Jo uh, Robbie Jones, the leading tackler for Alabama. You see he gets a quick read, knowing that Buford is going to run the ball. He hasn't attempted a pass this year, even though he's a quarterback. He gets help from Thomas Boyd, number 90. You have a number 89 in the backfield now. That's Mike Edwards. James goes in motion. Hobby is in at quarterback. Pressure zone, trying to set up a screen to the sidelines. They've got some room. They've got a first down. Pass goes to the tight end, Ed West. The tight end screen works for a first down, 13 yards. And Auburn keeps the ball at 3.35 to go in the first quarter. You're going to see the fake of quarterback rolling to the right now Lyles number 91 is about to get him within his grasp but Hobby turns and throws it west and tight end you can see the convoy blockers as Alabama was fooled on the play West goes down the boundary for the first down say that Hobby kept it for the last second didn't he yes he did it's first down oh, it's just over the 45 and outside goes the quarterback Hobby and he's horse collared after about a two-yard pickup by Robbie Jones. Robbie Jones, number 97, has the speed and the quickness, the temperament that you're looking for. He reads the play very quickly as the quarterback starts out the boundary. Now he forces. He looks at how he closes to the ball carrier and just lassoes him around the neck. The quarterback hobby goes down, fumbles the ball out of bounds. Second down and a long seven. Ball is on the 48. Play goes into the middle with George Peoples carrying, a senior out of Tampa. And he reaches midfield with it. So it's third down and about five at midfield. Two quarter to play, first quarter. Joe Sullivan now in at quarterback. Designated quarterbacks for a particular circumstance. We've seen three already. James goes in motion. Passes away. The pass is complete to Ed West. And West is inside the 20 and down at the 18. Would you believe what that kid did at quarterback? Warren Lyles was all over him. And he saw his tight end and he hit him. Watch Sullivan, whose brother was a Heisman Trophy winner, throw the ball out with, as Lyles had a hold of his leg. West, the tight end, had gotten in behind. Jim Bob Harris, who was up on a blitz. Big play and a great first down opportunity for Auburn again. At the Alabama 19, 31-yard pickup. Hobby is back in at quarterback. He goes inside to the big guy. George Peoples. He got a yard. A hard yard. If we go back to the visit we had with Pat Dye this morning, he said that he thought that his team would be able to get in behind Jim Bob Harris because he tries to sub support the run so quickly that they had a chance to get in behind him and they just did. Clayton Buford now in at quarterback. He gives it to Peoples, and Peoples almost popped out of there with it. He gets it down to about the 10, where Robbie Jones got just enough of him to bring him down. He's about a yard short of the first down, third down, coming up. That was tremendous blocking by Yuka, the all-southeastern conference right guard of Auburn, as he pulled and trapped out 
Edwards and opened up a hole for people. Ninth play in this possession. Tigers started on their own 30. Buford breaks his bone now. Leaving Peoples the long remaining back. The double wing set up. And he has the ball and he has the first down as he reaches the Alabama eight. First and goal to go for Auburn. Well, this is Auburn's second scoring opportunity. They're inside the 10 with a first down. Wishbone running attack. Goal line defense sent in down there as Mike Rodriguez goes in replacing Jim Bob Harris. They got the big boys out there. Hobby, the quarterback. Hobby back, looks to throw it. Throws, it is intercepted, I believe. Yes. Intercepted by Tommy Wilcox, the man that Pat Dye and his staff fears more than any other. And the pass should not have been thrown, really. He had him open early, but by the time he was able to set himself, Frank, the receiver was gone. And as he faked to the fullback, you can see he's taking too many steps. The ball should have been thrown on about his third step. But Wil Wilcox, who has already been named on the All-American football team, three times All-Southeastern Conference football, always in the right place at the right time. Perfect illustration of why Bear Bryant says he's one of the best defensive backs he has ever coached. Here Hobby again. Now the, the receivers keep the benches open way back there. But Hobby held the ball a little long, giving Wilcox time to recover, come in front, get in front of the receiver, West, catch the ball for the interception. Live action as Alabama tries to wedge it out. They're starting at their one. Ken Simon carried the ball, and the okay, Tigers stack him up. Looks like he got about a yard. There's Tommy. 93, 21. We had him on a cross-country tour with us this summer, and he's an exceptionally interesting, quiet young man. But what a nice young man he is. The third... And the fourth stringers have been in and out all day long. Well, in the case of these two teams, you say we don't have third and fourth stringers. We just have football players, and when these two teams play, it's just sick them. There's Legion Field. We have not had a read on the crowd as yet, but it's going to be a big one. The record here is just over 78,000. Good year, Blimp America. Alabama's had six different ball carriers so far and two quarterbacks in the game. Right now, they're looking at second down and nine from the two. Penalty flag is thrown as Joe Carter slants it over the left side, gets it out near the five. So let's see about the penalty. Might have been some encroachment by an Auburn man, or he could have been drawn off. Let's see. Offside to Auburn. That's a tough penalty. And Here's the Alabama running attack. You see, it's always spread around, isn't it? Yes, the offside right, defense. It is, Keith. With the wishbone, you have three running backs and a running back a quarterback, which means that they have to shift the responsibility around. And you can see that Lewis is second. The quarterback is second in rushing with only 315 yards. It is second down for the Tide. They need four. Ray, the quarterback. He's got a first down. As he reaches the 15, Greg Carr knocked him out. Out of bounds, the 15. Here are the stats for the first quarter. Total yards, as you can see, is nearly even. 69 for Alabama, 71 for Auburn. One turnover by Auburn, very costly as they were threatening. We anticipate a little defensive struggle at the beginning. That's about what's taking place. Well, Alan Gray has carried the ball five times and picked up 74 yards. One of them, of course, the big 63 yard. First down for Alabama. And the ball is to Peru. Peru flips it outside. And Carter is knocked down up around. No, Ricky Moore it is. Knocked down up around the 19. Greg Carr made the tackle. Of course, this was a very unusual play. It reversed with the quarterback throwing the option play but Carter number 54 the linebacker was not fooled on the play watch him hit him head up and he brings uh, more down Moore's a big fellow six footer 226 pounds just the freshman game four second down and six Gray with it and he is caught behind the line of scrimmage penetrating is Edmund Nelson number 99 that's the second uh, time that Nelson's made a tackle for a loss 
one thing that Auburn's tackles are doing is, is stepping inside on the quarterback and then coming out, and they're breaking the speed between the guard tackles. Nelson just came clean, made the play. Third down and a little over six now for Alabama. The ball is in between the 19 and 20. Mark Trout, the tight end, flexes out wide to the left, top of the picture. Ray sets up to throw it. Auburn gets it. Edmund Nelson again comes roaring in, number 99, and drops the Alabama quarterback, and it's punning time. Keith, I think we should mention as Nelson makes this break clean in the backfield, he is going over the young man that's replaced Kayabak, which had been dismissed from the football team. 99, Nelson has the free run right at Gray and makes the play. And so Simmons stands in the end zone to punt, hits it at the three, spins it upfield to Clinton, backs up at the 36, and brings it back. Now he backed up to the 41 and brings it back to about the 48 or 9. 51-yard punt by Simmons, 12-37 to play in the first half. In the Auburn offense, we've alluded to it already, that Pat Dye's used three different quarterbacks, and he calls them his designated quarterbacks depending on the circumstance because some of them can, one of them can run better than another, another one can pass better than another, and another one's a little quicker than the other two. And Sullivan has the most experience since he was a starter last year on the high formation for Auburn. Ball is just outside the Tigers' 48 first down for Auburn, and Sullivan gives it to Woods, and Christopher Woods coming around the corner on the reverse. Gets it down to about the Alabama 41, where he is brought down by Jimmy Watts playing defensive end. The sophomore from Gulf Breeze, Florida. And it's new shirt time. Get into the box. Well, Alabama pursues so quickly and rapidly. They have great speed among their linemen and linebackers. And when the play starts in one direction, most of the players take off. And a reverse sometimes can be very successful against them. Change coming across the field for the measurement with 12 minutes and 18 seconds to play in the first half and Alabama leading by a score of seven to nothing. And it's a first down for Auburn. Now we see Hobby in at quarterback, number 13, who's a combination runner and passer. It was Hobby that hit the tight end. Of Tried to hit the tight end for the touchdown and have the ball intercepted in the corner of the end zone. There's your second option. It goes to James, and James cannot get around the corner. He got just about the line of scrimmage, and that was it. And there's a penalty flag thrown right where the ball was snapped. No gain on the play. Bobby comes out. Buford goes in. Ron O'Neill goes into the Auburn backfield. Both coaches shuffling people in and out of that lineup constantly. Now, as we watch Buford, another freshman quarterback, take his stand. He is the best runner of all of the Auburn quarterbacks. Here's the call. On Holding. The Defense. The ball is moved on the holding penalty down inside the Alabama 32. They have not moved the changes yet. Now they'll go. O'Neill comes out, and George Peoples goes back in. George had to come out and uh, change his shirt. It was torn off his back. First down for Auburn. Just inside the Alabama 32. Hubert spins it inside and gets a yard, maybe two, before Benny Perrin comes up from the cornerback to make the tackle for Alabama. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football presentation will come out of Miami as the Philadelphia Eagles go south to play the Dolphins. And the Dolphins really a team that needs a win here. They're sharing the AFC East with the New York Jets. The Eagles are sitting in there at 9 and 3, and they are still in quite a struggle with the Dallas Cowboys in the NFC East. Second down, 9 from the 30, one-yard line as Hobby sets up throws for the corner. Incomplete intended for Christopher Woods. Knocking it away, Jeremiah Castile. And Jim Bob Harris, and Jim Bob appears shaken up. It's a fake of the option play, which is supposed to pull the defensive back up. 
but not Jeremiah Castillo. Number 19, excellent defensive back. You can see him go up at his height, getting a little help from Jim Bob Harris. Number nine, ball falls incomplete. And it's third down and about nine. L. Blue is now in there, defensive secondary. They send it inside, and there isn't much in there. They advance to about the Alabama 27. Now Sullivan comes on. And so does the Auburn place kicker, Al Del Greco. This one will be a pretty good size. They're going to spot the ball out at the 33. It'll be a 43-yard field goal attempt. And timeout is called by Auburn with 10.34 to play in the first half. And Alabama is sitting on a 7-0 lead. An 80-yard march in which the Alabama quarterback Gray picked up 65 of it. All right, Al Del Greco. A sophomore from Coral Gables, Florida, who has missed in the ball game from 25 yards, is now going to try to hit one from 43 and get Auburn on the scoreboard. It's up. He missed it to the right again. He missed the first one on the right side, and he misses this one on the right side, and he had plenty of lag on it. And so Auburn again is turned away. And now let us spend a moment with Dave Dial. All right, Keith, thank you very much. You've got an exciting game there. It wasn't very exciting for number one ranked Pittsburgh today. The Panthers knocked off by Penn State, in case you missed it, and that score is correct. 48 to 14, Kurt Warner with 104 yards on the ground. Kenny Jackson with 158. Blackledge, two touchdown passes. So the number one team gets knocked off back to Keith. Thank you, Dave. And on first down, Alabama comes to the attack from the 27. And there is nothing out there for Walter Lewis as he tries to take it across the field looking for something to open, but the Auburn defense just kept stringing him and then slammed the door on him. One thing we've noticed on the last two possessions of Alabama is the fact that they're going wide or passing. The reason for this is the Auburn defense is bunched up inside trying to stop the straight ahead thrust of the powerful wishbone. You can see the weather is very pleasant, 60 degrees in Birmingham. And it's second down and eight. They take it inside. And uh, Ricky Moore is brought down by Danny Skutak. Danny Skutak is an all-conference football player, the leading tackler, just a fireball-type player. He read the play as quickly as anyone I've ever seen, and he hit Simon in the backfield, and there's nothing there. Excuse me, Walter in the backfield, number 26, freshman fullback. Great play by Skutak. 29-yard line, third down, and about seven. A little more than seven. Lewis to the roof. The roof is caught and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Well, Pat said his defense could play with anybody, he thought. Dennis Collier was the fellow who came in there to make the initial contact, and then Dan Dickerson put Garuth down. It's fourth down, and Alabama will have to punt it. Great span by the Auburn defense. The wishbone is not that easy to stop. Started with first and 10, end up with fourth and 20. They get pretty good field position out of this. Malcolm Simmons averaging just under 44 yards, and boy, that's up Danny. He nailed it. That's Clinton. And Clinton comes across the 40, out to about the 43. 50-yard punt, 10-yard return. Among the bowl games to be seen here on ABC television, the Gator Bowl, December 28, matching North Carolina and Arkansas. The Tar Heels, number eight in the country, in the polls, and Arkansas, 17. And then the Sugar Bowl game, January 1, the evening, 8 o'clock Eastern time, number three, Georgia, against Pittsburgh. And the Panthers will not be number one when the bowls come out next week, not after what happened today. First down for Auburn. Now let's call it the 42. It's really closer there. The ball goes inside the people. Goes over the right tackles back. And didn't find a whole lot. Working behind Pat Harrington, sophomore out of Rome, Georgia, and Keith Euchre, a senior from Hollywood, Florida. Buford is in now at quarterback as Sullivan comes out for Auburn. Alabama will crowd offense because Buford has not attempted a pass this year. Second down and about eight from near the 45. Buford is caught and 
struggles for about two as Tommy Wilcox brings him down. He, he is rotating the quarterbacks on every down. Now Hobby comes into the ball game, who has somewhat of a mixture. Woods, the fastest receiver, comes in and split in. Barbara Reeves comes out at tight end. That puts Ed West back in. Third and six. Look at this. They had Hobby in there. Oh, the pass caught by Woods, and the ball squirts loose, and Alabama man dives on it. He called it down, Keith. Completed it down. pass. There's a penalty flag thrown back up field. But he was down on his back and the ball came flying away. Jeremiah Castillo came in to scoop it up after he had belted the man. Let's see about the penalty. They had Buford in there in the backfield. The other quarter, so he had two quarterbacks in the backfield and they get an illegal procedure call against him. So he might have had something else in mind. But whatever, Hobby went ahead and threw the ball. Woods caught it, but then Auburn is nailed. Let's see if Buford, number 11, in motion. He probably turns up towards the line of scrimmage before the ball. Illegal no, motion. Illegal motion. Ball. Offense. Yeah. Right guard and right tackle moves ahead of the count. Yep. Some catch by Woods. Watch him go up. The ball of a position. Let's see. I don't think he had the ball. Well, let's see again. If his knee touches the ground while he's got the ball, and then he falls out, that's a good call. His back was on the ground, and the ball was in his possession. It's third down and two after the penalty. The pass is away to the sideline. The pass is completed to Tommy Carroll, but he is short of the first down at midfield. And I would think Auburn will go to the punt. Alan Bollinger. Averaging just under 43 yards per kick. Joey Jones is deep for the tie. Joey lets it go, and he's knocked it out of bounds on the five. He hit it down the sideline, trying to keep it away from Jones, who can fly, and he keeps Alabama in bad field position with a 44-yard punt, knocking it out on the five-yard line. Deep against Penn State with Lewis in the ball game, backed up on their own five-yard line. He dropped back on three straight downs to throw the pass before they punted the ball, which doesn't appear to seem like that's Fair Bryant's strategy. But that's what he wanted to do, and that's what he did, and you might look for it here. Well, you've got Jones and Bendross both in. Bendross is a tight end. Tight end, right. He's going to throw it out of the end zone. No, he didn't need it. Walter Lewis, who has, I think, great leg strength. I wonder what he could do with a sled, because he really has ability to shake off tacklers. Isn't it, would it be great to have, as we look at Walter Lewis, number 10, to have a quarterback that can run a 9-600 or 4-5-40 and can throw the ball like uh, Lewis did against Penn State. He had a sensational game as we look at the running numbers for the Alabama quarterback. He's a second leading ball carrier. Gained nine yards there. Second down and one at the 14 for Alabama. They'll take it inside. And Kenny Simon trying to pick up the first down. is pretty close to it. But he doesn't have it. So the Auburn defense now try to cinch it up and keep Alabama pinned in here so they can get the ball back with some decent field position. 540 to go in the first half. And Alabama leading 7 to nothing. It is Joe Carter and looks like Carter crossed the 15. If in fact he did, it will be a first down. Greg Tut, cornerback, made the hit. And it's a first down, Alabama. Alabama going 80 yards for the touchdown. Auburn has had two field goal opportunities, one from 25, one from 43, and they have not converted them. Auburn man or is an Alabama man? It's an Alabama man shaken up. Might be Carter, the ball carrier. So Joe Carter is shaken. 
after the tackle that'll bring in Jeff Fagan at his running back position at 532 to go and Paul Bryant at 20 of his 24 teams at Alabama finish in the top 10. Well this this man's story is you could go on and on. You could talk a month about yes, it. Yes you certainly could. I think it's interesting though that from the time he went to the wishbone in 1971 until the present time he's had his greatest success. Started his head coaching career at Maryland then to Kentucky then to Texas A&M and then to his alma mater Alabama. Carter walks off. All right. Check in with Vern Lundquist. Keith, uh, because of the historical importance of this game, there are a total of 17 game balls being used, tossed in and out. Everybody from the National Football Hall of Fame on down to, of course, Coach Bryant would like to have a game ball if indeed he wins his 315. 17 game balls are being used, eight in the first half, nine in the second. Throw another one in, Vern. I want one, too. All right. <laughs> first down. Over the time, just over the 15, and Walter Lewis drops it. He looks downfield. He lets it go downfield, and the pass is caught by Tim Clark, and then he can't hold on. He had his hands on it, but couldn't bring it down and control it. Keith, what a move Tim Clark put on the Auburn defensive halfback as we look at the fake of the quarterback to the fullback, and then Lewis lays the ball out. You can see how wide open number 80 Clark is. He's gotten in behind the secondary. He catches it momentarily, but then it slips out incomplete. Boy, he was open. Why is he wearing gloves? <laughs> it might be cold down there. He was not up here. Now, I have no earthly idea. <laughs> unusual. On a 60-degree day. Lewis getting some heat. Gets a good block. Now they get it. Paul Carruth laying out of the left halfback position in the wishbone curl back in there and gave him a big block Walter couldn't quite break it he picked up about no give him three maybe better part of three make it third down and seven seven to nothing Alabama Auburn defense has just stood right up to the test Keith they've been bunching up inside and getting away with incomplete passes even though the all Alabama receivers are open third and long Give it off to Simon, and Simon does not get the first down. A little delay coming with Simon breaking over the right side. Had a hold for a moment. Then it was closed off by Bob Harris with strong safety in a support position, and the Tides got a punch. He's another sharp departure from the wishbone style of play by Bear Bryant, throwing on first and second down, running the draw play on third down. Very unusual, the wishbone style of play. David King back, fair catch called for Auburn, and the Tigers get the ball back, first down on their own 37. 3.58 to go, first half. We'll have interviews with the two coaches. We'll have highlights of the Pitt Penn State game for you at halftime and ABC News halftime report. And the conversation I had earlier today with Bear Bryant. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. First down from the 37. He's going to get this. People just out there. It's, it's a foot race. And it's touchdown. goes 63 yards and Auburn's on the scoreboard. Del Greco tries for the tie. It's good. 347 to play in the first half and a bolt of lightning wearing blue. The game is tied. Joy 
press over this boat by people. Keith, there's never been an offense in football where you take the fullback and run him up the middle and score without a safety man laying a handle. Why is that true? The safety man, Harris, was chasing the quarterback in case it was an option play, and here goes people 63 yards for the tying touchdown. Castillo Finally, caught Castillo him. Castillo brings it down. Right. No other offense has been my time to take a fullback run him up the middle, Keith, and not be touched. That's the wishbone. My goodness. We've got ourselves a scuffle, don't we? Oh, that will do something to the momentum for this Auburn football team. Dave Blanks will kick it off. Joey Jones is deep for Alabama. It is Carruth at the seven. Down at about the 13. Johnny Cheeks brought him down. Here's Robert Jones, number 97. You can see he's the linebacker. He's going out to chase the quarterback. On this particular play, his assignment is a quarterback. So he's going out. He ignores the fullback. That's what the wishbone does. And a little bit later, you would see Harris, number nine, going over to take the pitch. That's why he went, people put 63 yards for the touchdown. Ball is very close to the 12. Alan Gray coming toward the corner and takes a lick at the 10. Fumbles, Fumbles and Auburn recovers it. Mark Germany came in and fell with Alan Gray and knocked the ball loose. Germany, number 46. Oh, is that Germany a football player? Free safety coming all the way up on the line of scrimmage as you look at the Auburn faithful. Watch the middle safety as Gray number 14 Dominic. Look at the right of your screen. Watch him come up. Pat I said he is a cold-blooded hitter. There's the result of it. Auburn has a chance. Just short of the 10-yard line. First down for the Tigers, and Sullivan gives it outside. And the game is down to about the six with Willie Howell carrying the ball, a junior at 188 pounds. Keith, I think the background should be mentioned. He has had five operations since he's been on the Auburn campus. You talk about dedication. You saw it right on that last play. Hobby is the quarterback now. At the Alabama six, second down. Double wing. People to the five. Randy Edwards, defensive right tackle, penetrated. Big sophomore, 248-pounder from Marietta, Georgia. The other plays being indicated from the sidelines. We ought to go back and mention Alan Auburn had, had three other scoring opportunities, missed two field goals, and then on first down had a pass intercept. All those field goals would look good right now. They sure would. Buford now the quarterback. No, it's hot. It's hot. Thirteen. Play good pass. Gets it out to James. James inside the five, rolled out at the four. Oh my goodness, he had his eye on the corner. The end zone just four strides away, but he couldn't get there as Boyd and Jones knocked him out of bounds. Have you ever seen such speed at linebacker as Alabama has? Watch number 90, Boyd number 97. Jones, watch him go out the line. Look at Boyd number 90. He's an all-conference football player, all-American. Six foot three, 195 pounds. Del Greco is in with a tee. 22 yard field goal attempt to give Auburn the lead. The snap is fumbled. And Sullivan tries to throw it away and doesn't work. It's a face mask filter, though, Keith, I believe. Penalty flag thrown back on the, about the 20 yard line. So hold on, everything here. Hold on. No. No. Illegal pass. Illegal pass. Mike Hicks snapped the ball back for Auburn. They hold by Sullivan. He just simply couldn't get a handle on it. And here's the call on the penalty. Intentional grounding on offense. Down count. The ball goes over first down. And so once again, Auburn is turned away. They have failed on three field goal opportunities. 
Keith, this a field goal opportunity is a three-man team. The center, the holder, and then the kicker. It went, the ball went right through Sullivan, number five's hand. Snap looked all right. It did. It looked perfect right over the team. Well, Alabama has the ball. We're all tied at 7-7. And the ball goes to Jeff Bacon, number 35, and he goes into the boundary and out of bounds. At 129 to go in the first half, they mark it just short of the 30. Auburn, if they had been successful, obviously, on the three field goal defense, would have an imposing lead here at halftime. With the way their defense is playing, they could rest on the laurels of the defense for a while. Well, Pat and I said, we want our offense to go out there and keep the ball in live long enough to give our defense a chance to win. Second down and six. Walter Lewis drops back to throw, looks for Jones deep down the middle. Jones is out there, well covered, and it is incomplete, intercepted as the ball ricocheted off the cover man. And David King knocked it away, and Dormany caught it just before it hit the turf. There we see the Auburn faithful, but that was a sensational effort by both King and Dominic. You can see what Jones, number four, he's in behind the freshman halfback, number 27, David King. But King has a little burst. Watch the burst as Jones has to slow up the ball. It's deflected, and watch this effort by Dominic off his helmet. That's off his King's helmet, but look at the effort by Dominic, number 46. What a sensational play. Third intercept of the year for Mark. Mark Germany gives Auburn the ball. At the 23, first down with a minute 20 to go in the first half. Bobby hands it off to Peoples, and George runs it up close to the 29. Got about six yards on that carry. Peoples now on 10 carries has 91 yards. I think Auburn will be content to just run the clock out. One minute, less than a minute to play. Peoples again surging up the middle for what appears to be a first down. That will stop the clock. At 48 seconds to go. They may want a measurement of this one. So Auburn with missed opportunities haunting them. Missing three field goals. They could have broken on top. Didn't do it. Missed a 25 yarder. Missed a 43 yarder and missed a 22 yarder. Keith and Al Del Greco, the Auburn kicker, was 8 out of 14 coming into this ball game. Missed 3 in the first half. It's a first down for the Tigers at their own 33, and the clock now running with a change in place at 40 seconds to go in the first half. Look at this ball, Nate. A little triple wing. Triple wing to the top of the picture as Sullivan rolls that way and puts it in the air to the sidelines. And the man is taken out of bounds at the Alabama 47. It was Tommy Carroll making the catch. He is from Dunwoody, Georgia, which is a community near Atlanta. Well, you can see that Alabama Auburn had triple wing as they went three men down. Then Woods drops right out and catches the ball. Excuse me, Tommy Carroll. Time called with 26 seconds to play in the first half. And we'll be right back. 26 seconds remaining to play in the first half. We are tied. Alabama 7, Auburn 7. All Bryant's Alabama Crimson tied. If they can win it today, will be number 315 for him. Moving him past Amos Alonzo Stagg as the winningest coach ever. Triple wing to the left side as Sullivan puts it up deep. And it is incomplete. Believe it or not, he had three receivers downfield, and none of them were close to the ball because I think one of the three made a wrong turn. The man that was supposed to curl it to the boundary didn't do it. I think it was Carroll. Again, you can see three receivers right here, triple wing. Carroll, number 84, was supposed to hook up, I believe, but all of them went deep. I... Oh, he did hook up, I guess, yes, he did. The ball was overthrown way over his head. I didn't even see him. I thought we had three deep. 20 seconds to go in the first half. Sullivan sets up to throw it. He throws a 
A broken wing downfield, and it didn't complete. That bird just didn't fly. That bird just did not fly. It slid out of his hands. Al Blue finally knocked it down. But it was one of those things you didn't even... You did. Well, all you had to do is just hit, hit, keep hope it. it wasn't picked off. That's right, but it's a planned play. As all three of them are running in the same area, area hoping that the ball would be deflected and one would be there to catch it. Let's see what happens. All three of them turn it at the same time. You can tell that's a re rehearsed play. That thing had a broken wing coming down. <laughs> it, 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 it looked like one of my pads. <laughs> <laughs> coach Bobby Dodd, my old coach, said I can throw the best wounded dove in the world. <laughs> 12 seconds to play in the first half, and we've got a timeout call by Auburn. They have none remaining. So, Paul Bryant, plotting on the sidelines with his defensive people. And Donahue is the man that puts the defen defensive game plan together for Alabama. Pat Dye across the way. He coached under Bryant as an assistant for nine years. From there, he went to East Carolina, from, and then on to Wyoming and back to Alabama. As we look at the timeout, Alabama, Auburn has none left. You can see that the Tigers have had their chances. They'll be sitting on a nine-point lead. Third down might be the last play of the first half. Same alignment, triple wing left. Illegal formation, too, Keith. The pass is away. And the pass is incomplete, and you've got a penalty flag. Both of the outside men got right up on the line of scrimmage, which made the inside man illegal to go down for a pass. What was it? The headlinesman was right on the job to saw it. Auburn is uh, Pleading their case for defensive interference downfield, but Frank called it for you. It's illegal lineup. It looked like they were lined up. Yes, the two two outside men illegally. both were on the line of scrimmage, making the inside man illegal. Got ineligible downfield on the offense. Refuse. So it's fourth down with four seconds to play in the first half. Alabama's going to do, uh, Auburn's going to do exactly the same thing again, I believe. He's just throw it in the end zone. And what we should well, point out. You, Sullivan's going to have to throw it a long <laughs> way to get it to the end zone. Remember this, that if there is a penalty call for interference, the offense gets another play and they can right. kick a field goal. Right. He's got it up. Ball hits the ground, no flag thrown. First half is over. And after one half of play at Lincoln Field in Birmingham, Alabama seven and Auburn seven. And here's Vern. All right, Keith. Pat, obviously the people's run gave your folks just tremendous momentum. Well, you know, the kicking game killed us. And uh, we've had the ball down and we, we should be, right now we should be eight, ten points up. And, uh, but that's, that's football and you know, we play them with a lot of emotion and so forth, but we make it too many mistakes now and from the sideline and on the field. Nonetheless, you're very, very much in this ball game. Well, we thought we'd be in it when we got here. And, uh, you know, they got a great football team and great talent, and Coach Brown will do a super job getting them adjusted at half. we got to do the same thing. We just need to come back out and settle down, play football, and 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 uh, not make the mistakes that we make. Now, one more word. Uh, you are flying in the face of tradition in the use of your quarterback. That's something you just don't see very often. Well, we, you know, we got a situation now. we got the two freshmen that offered a lot of talent, and Joe Sullivan has got great leadership, and... And uh, we're just going to, you know, we've taken them all year long and try to give them something that they can do to give a team a chance to win, move the football. Okay, Pat, thank, thank you. you Pat Dye, head coach of Auburn NCAA College Football. Alabama versus Auburn will continue after this commercial message and a word about an upcoming show on ABC. You might want to open it up, go to the pass a little bit more here in the second half. Thank you, Is there a chance you might want to go to the pass a little more here in the second half? Well, we tried to pass, have open first half and drop them all over the field. We're going to run straight at them. Try to get the triple option going. We've been playing like we're afraid we'd hurt somebody, hurt their feelings or something. All right, Coach, good luck. <laughs> what do you think the clubhouse or the story was like, huh? I'd love to hurt the oh. You can tell he's fired up. Uh -huh. He's after Alabama kicks off to start the second half. Two over. And yeah, that's Buford, quarterback, coming out of the end zone with it. 
And he gets his leg lock on the 17. Where Auburn will have it. And the halftime statistics read this way. You can see that uh, Auburn surprisingly leads in the stats in first downs, yardage, surprisingly a big advantage in passing, total yardage, the turnovers, Alabama two, Auburn one. And three missed field goals by Auburn, and you can see why Al Bear Bryant was saying we're going to run right at him. But Auburn has the ball now in the first possession of the second half in a 7-7 ball game, and they go inside the people, and George is across the 20, just barely. The offensive unit for the Tigers, Sullivan starting at quarterback, Peoples at fullback, James and Edwards at running back, Christopher Woods, the white man, big guys in the trenches, Jordan, Garum, Hicks, Euchre, Arlington, and West. <laughs> Willie Howell is now in. Open 20. James goes in motion on second down and seven. And the gain is out to about the 23, where they'll be looking at third and close to four. Mike Pitts is the defensive end for Alabama, 243-pounder. Jackie Klein, a tackle. Klein weighs in at 266. Warren Lyles, the middle guard, 257. Randy Edwards, a tackle, 248. And at end, Russ Wood, 215. A red elephant rolling on his, well, was, on his bicycle. Third down and a little over four. Peoples now has reached 100 yards on 13 carries of the ball game. And Sullivan is caught. Nope, gets away. Look at this. He gets his pass off. It's going to be picked off and dropped by Perrin. Denny Perrin had it. Was setting up the run. And he dropped it. Oh, my goodness. You're going to see it's kind of a confused, weird play. I think it was a quick turnout to the wide receiver. But then number 31, Mike Rodriguez, broke in the, in the backfield, flushed Sullivan out. Then he turns and throws the ball up for scramble. Benny Perry, number 23, has it in his hands and drops it. A kick, kick rush on by Alabama. Little feigning act put on by Bollinger, but it doesn't get him anything. And the fair catch after a 32-yard punt is down at the Alabama 45. Take a look at it now as you see Jeremiah Castillo flashing in. If his foot's in the air, Keith, it's roughing the penalty. Once he puts his foot down, I don't believe Castillo touched him at all. I agree no. with it. It's a little acting part. <laughs> yeah. Kickers have to be have good theatrics. Yeah, but the foot had come down. He had both of his feet down by the time no. Castillo had uh, gone by. Then he's just another football player once he gets his kicking foot back on the ground. Ball is on the 45. And Ken Coley shows up at quarterback now for Alabama for the first time today. Strangely enough, he's the one that started the season, has been injured, and hadn't played much in the last four games. He's also very good running back. That time he isn't going anywhere. Looks to me like that ball might have been snapped a little before he That's expected exactly it. right. He's the center snapped in the defense charge. Only at quarter. We've got Mickey Ginyard in there right now as Paul Bryant starts out substituting instantly. Beasley, Adcock, Mott Vickers, McQueen, and Kraut. And we've got an Auburn man shaken up on the field. And time called for him. A loss of a yard on Coley's carry to make it second down and 11. And let's have a look now at the big guys who play defense for the Auburn Tigers. Zach Hardy at the end is a 230-pounder. Edmund Nelson had a couple of big plays in the first half, 252. Dow Ortman, nose guard, 227-pounder. Adai Jeff Jackson, defensive end. And number 27 coming off the field, that's David King, who was involved in a tip that resulted in an interception for Auburn in the first half. But here's Alabama in good field position, second down 11 from their own 44 in a tie ball game at seven, and Coley looking for the corner. And he finds the corner, and he gets it up to midfield. Though he gains six yards on the carry, he'll be looking at third down and five. The Auburn linebackers are Dennis Skutak, 207-pounder. Chris Martin, 227 pounds. Secondary, David King, shaken up a moment ago, 175. Tim Brinkard as 166-pounder. Uh, Bob Harris, big guy, 212. And Mark Formany, 
at 184. It's third down and five from midfield. Coley turns it in the middle. Penalty flag goes down. Coley goes down at the Auburn 46, a yard short of the first down. Let's see what the call is. Base mask against Coley. See, that's a tough break, Keith. Auburn had him stop short of the first down. Now it's a big 15-yard penalty. Well, well, well. Mm. Boy, that hurts. If you're an Auburn partisan. Ball is moved down just inside the 32. Where it's first down Alabama. Auburn has been flagged five times for 45 yards. Alabama once for 10. They break the bone as Coley hands it off inside the crooks. Now it's Moore. Number Moore it is carrying the ball. Mickey Ginyard, number 24, had made an appearance. He's still in there. He is a freshman out of Atlanta. And Moore is a freshman out of Huntsville, Alabama. As we look at the Alabama offense in the second quarter, we can see why Barry said we're changing our strategy back and start doing the things that we do best. Run right at him. Run the triple off. Penalty really hurt Auburn because they had Alabama stopped on fourth and about two. Here's Coley. And Coley is gang tackled as he closes in on the 23. That'll leave him about a yard and a half short of his first down with Quincy Williams, a sophomore out of Douglasville, Georgia, making the stop. Ben Dross comes in now for Alabama, and Joey Jones, the smaller of the two leads. Pete, this is the first test Auburn defense has had to try to stop it. They need a good two. Ball pops up in the air. Coley grabs it on the way down, lunges, and he's short. Now Ortman was there to bring him down. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard. He, the, the quarterback juggled the ball from center. You can see if he steps, puts it out in the fullback hand, it's knocked right out. More the freshman fullback hit it, and Coley was really lucky to get it back. All right, Ben Thomas goes in to help anchor the defensive front for Auburn as Alabama's going to go on fourth and one. Auburn linebackers settle in there. They've got about a nine-man front up there. They give it off to Moore, and he goes over the top and looks like he's got his first down. Ed Lyman is spotting the ball beyond the first down mark. minutes and 21 seconds to play in the third quarter and we are even at seven. Auburn has missed three field goal opportunities. And another opportunity when they threw an interception on first down at the one yard line. Right. First down time. Here the Auburn 21. Coley looks to throw. Goes over the middle. Jones knocked away. Great defensive play by Tim Drinkard. Keith, that was a brilliant defensive play. Jones had Trinkard beat on the post route. The ball is right on target. Look at this. Watch Trinkard. He beat on the play. Watch this effort right here as he throws his left arm out and deflects the ball incomplete. Keith, that was a sensational play. They're hungry, too. Yes, they are. Second down and 10. Number 92 stepped across. Scott Riley had made contact. Whether he was tempted, teased, yes, he was. Well, Where'd you get that word, teased? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what Alabama did. Or oh, they wanted to get after him so quickly, they made a little ball to move. See you. Offense. So Auburn gets burned by a face mask penalty, and now Alabama gets nailed with a five-yard procedure call. Back to the ball up to beyond the 26, where it is second down and 15. Ben Gross, the wide receiver, is lined up and tight in on the right. That sends Jones, the speedster, to the top of the picture. 
Foley back to throw. Slips that little shovel pass inside to Bendross. And Bendross has got a first down. Touchdown, Alabama. football coach of our time, if not of all time, that's coaching. Kim, the extra point. It's good. At 9.50 to go in the third quarter. A little shovel pass from Foley to Bendross. You can see Foley rolling to the left. Bendross is a tight end. He's going to shovel the ball. The coaches call this the old Utah pass. Jack Curtis, when he was coaching at Utah University, used to use this effectively. A great block by Jones. On touch, the defensive halfback, and Ben Bendros goes in for the score. What a play. And Alabama goes back on top of the Auburn Tigers by a score of 14 to 7. All right, Alabama ready to kick off with Terry Sanders kicking, and the deep man for Auburn is Clayton Buford, the freshman quarterback, as the Tide leads 14 to 7, with 9.50 to go in the third quarter. The sailor. It goes to Buford at the one. He's got a wedge and he's cut down with a pretty hard nosed tackle downfield on the 17. Another look at the Alabama touchdown. Anytime you see the, a ball carrier score wide open like this without being touched, look at the blocking. Number 26, look at the left of your screen as you see number 26 knocks Gutak, the linebacker, down. Now we're going to pick up the second great block by little Joey Jones. Number four, old tough, number 40, this defensive quarterback, then throw scores. What a play. And Auburn comes back now with Harvey as quarterback. And from the, they're going to mark start him on the 18 rather than the 17. Give him two yards. Alabama's possession and touchdown. Capping the 55-yard drive. That's Jesse Benjamin, number 88. Correct. Good receiver lined up at tight end on that particular play. Second down and eight from the 20. Option. First man through. Bullback people's got it. And he got about three yards. So they're looking now at. Well, it's near the 22, so call it third and six. Tommy Carroll, wide man. Bobby Rose that way. Gets his pass off. It's thrown into the seats. Incomplete. And the reason was at number 81, Mike Pitts leveled him. He didn't have any place to go because Lyles was on the other side. And so Auburn will have to punt. Bollinger comes in. Last time Bollinger punted, now Alabama went after him. He kicked it 32 yards. They've got 10 people up on the line. Now they drop off. And the kick is away. Not long again. Ball goes through Jones. It's loose. Auburn man chasing it. Clinton can't find it. He's still dribbling it. He falls on it. He's down on the one. It is Auburn football. Can you believe it? Keith, what a play. Chuck Clinton opened a ball game on a brilliant punt return that gave Auburn an early scoring opportunity. They didn't cash that one in, but he was pursuing it. There was an Alabama man after it. They kept dribbling it between them, and finally Auburn covered it, and they'll put it down just inside the Alabama three. That was just about a 40-yard fumble, Keith. Can you dribble. believe that? <laughs> dribble, yes. That's exactly what he was doing, and he has every right to. As long as he doesn't kick it, he's, he's making a bona fide effort to pick it up. All right, they go to a double wing set with Hobby. 
the quarterback. They give it a people, and people sort of disappears in that stack of white. Let's go back to that fumble by Jones now. The ball goes through Joey. Now, you see him fall down. Number 30 falls down. Now, here comes Clinton into the picture. Clinton, number two. He picks the ball with his left hand. Watch him dribble it down. He still hasn't got it. Picks it with his right hand. Kicks it over with his left hand. He's making a bona fide effort to get the ball. I think that's legal. This is James for the corner. Touchdown. to tie the score again as Lionel James hits the corner for the score. Del Greco, the kick, it is up. It is just good. He hooked it pretty sharply, but he got it in. And at 7.51 to play in the third quarter, we're even again at 14. Look once again at the punt. Jones, number four, lets the ball go right through his arms. Strangely enough, it goes right through his leg. Clanton, number two, trying to pick it up. He's batting it down with his hands, making a bona fide effort to try to get it. Up and down, around, finally goes all the way back to the two-yard line. Jones, and then Clanton, number two, falls on it for Auburn's ball. Goodness, what a play. Don't think I've ever seen anything like that, Keith. Well, I'll tell you, too, the artificial surface had something to do with it as well, because that ball bounces around. And here's Lionel James now, slipping away from Robbie Jones and getting in for the touchdown. No substitute for speed when you run wide. And James showed his quickness as he went into the end zone. I remember another fellow named James who played halfback at Auburn. He didn't have that kind of speed. He's the present governor, and his young son is a halfback on the present Auburn team. Bob James, we're talking about. All right, we get a little mix-up down there, but it's Jones who comes down with the ball and looking for the sidelines and finds quite a bit of room as Joey comes all the way back out to the 25. So now, here's Alabama. As Auburn, after the unusual uh, pursuit of the ball by, after the fumble, takes it in from two yards. All made possible by the fumble on the punt by Joey Jones and the great effort by Clinton to recover the ball on the three. Ken Coley is in there at quarterback. Ken Simon, number 20. And uh, he has the ball, and he might have a sore head after that hit. Donnie Humphrey, number 79, big defensive tackle. For Auburn just penetrated and hit Simon before he had any chance to move forward. The ebb and flow of emotion in this game. So dramatic. It, it is dramatic. And it makes a difference in how you play. They're giving some yardage on that with his initial penetration before the Tigers rolled him back. They'll call it second down at about nine. And Coley's on a roll now. Not a whole lot of help over there for the Alabama quarterback. And Coley is down. And he may have been deflated by that hit from Greg Cut. Cut really hit him. Let's let's watch it again. Number 11. Cole is rolling out. It's a run all the way. The lineman of Alabama downfield blocking. Cut number 40 is the defensive quarterback. Right there, it looks like, yes, his, his head collided. Number 40, number 11. Timeout for the injured Coley with 6.54 to play in the third quarter and a 14-14 tie. Legion Field now under lights. We have had a beautiful sunset. And we have 6.50 to play in the third quarter with the clock running. And Walter Lewis is in replacing Ken Coley at quarterback for Alabama on third down and nine. 
Back to throw it. Got some heat. Gets away. Got some more heat. Gets it off. Pass incomplete. Thrown out of bounds. And Lewis took a pretty good wallop. Ben Thomas, the 245-pound freshman from Aspen, Georgia, got him. And I mean, he got him. Foley was helped off the field, but he was walking. If we mentioned it would be a hard-fought struggle. Both of these teams play hard, they play fierce, and they know how to tackle. The punt by Simmons. Clinton, who's been quite a figure in this ball game, accepts it back at the 25. And he's knocked out of bounds up around the 33. 47 yard punt. Next Saturday, a doubleheader with the Georgia Bulldogs, ranked number three in the nation against Old Ford Georgia Tech. You'll have the Division Three and Two uh, Division Three Championship and Division Two semifinals. And we'll finish the day out of the vet in Philadelphia with the annual between Army and Navy. Hobby is at quarterback. And George Peoples sticks his helmet in the crowd and moves it out to about the 38. That's almost five yards. If we hadn't mentioned much about the offensive line of Auburn, which has been the surprise of the ball game, Hicks at center, Garner, jo uh, Rowe, Yuka, and Arrington. Doing a good job. Second and five. Take it inside again. George Peoples is earning his supper. And it looks like he may have a first down. Let's spend a moment with Vern. First here with Ken Foley, the quarterback. Bruce. He might be back. They don't know that, but it is no head injury. It's a bruised what, Vern? I didn't hear that. Bruised right knee. Oh, thank you. The way he got hit, I was worried about the neck shoulder area. Just short, just short of the first down. Peoples now with 112 yards on 17 carries. One thing about the wishbone, if you pull back and make yardage up the middle, Chief, you've got a chance. That is the first part of the triple option. You need to get a surge by the offensive line, and Auburn's doing a little better this half. Third down, and they need about six inches. It'll be a tough six inches. Quarterback just dives right down Monk's the knees and ankles trying to get his six inches. Quarterback is hobby right now. Freshman from Pittston, Georgia. Well, he <laughs> didn't get a whole lot, did he? They're going to have to bring the chain on again, looks like. What happens when the quarterback goes underneath the offensive lineman? His knee sometimes touches Keith. Uh, before he gets much yardage. Looks from this vantage point that he has the first pass. It's also rather difficult, I think, for the uh, linesman to, to really yeah. make a true read on That's it. correct. Good point. Can't see it. Very good point. From experience, I know. Chief <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Jackson, Frank Royals, and Vern Lundquist here at Legion Field in Birmingham with 5.31 to go in the third quarter in a tie ball game at 14 and first down for Auburn. Auburn playing Alabama. Mighty tough. Here goes Peoples. That's the play he almost, in fact, that's the play he broke the touchdown run on, and by golly, he almost snuck out of there again. Deep from the end zone, look at the left side, the uh, right side of the screen, number 56, Charles Garner, is an undersized offensive guard, six feet, 215 pounds. He's blocking on all conference All-American Thomas Boyd, and he opens up a nine-yard game. Second down and one. Let's see if they go along with it. If they'll stay with the ground. Nope, he's going to put it up. He's going for Woods. It's going to be picked off. Kenny Perrin makes the interception. Well, he tried to go for the big play, and it backfired on him. As Perrin makes the interception, the ball wasn't thrown deep enough to make it a real serious threat. Second time that Hobby has been intercepted. Wood, the fastest of the receivers for Auburn, but Perrin, he's not covering the man. He's playing the ball. The ball was underthrown. Perrin's a very fine athlete, good high school basketball player, could have gone to Alabama on a basketball scholarship, intercepted and returned it to give Alabama another opportunity. 
Crimson Tide with the football, first down at their own 35. Alabama in the first half departed from their usual game plan, tried to throw the ball, and come back in the second half running the wishbone. There's Benny. Walter Lewis is now the quarterback. Mickey Ginyard goes in motion. And the ball is handed off to Moore. And the big freshman just keeps on ricocheting off Auburn people until he is finally dropped at the 48, and that's the first down. Steve Mott, offensive center, is blocking on Altman, the nose guard, and you can see he takes him all the way to the left. Moore, number 26, picks, picks up the, the block of uh, Vickers, makes a nice, powerful run, just runs with power and authority, 225-pound freshman fullback. First down tied. Getting it again in motion. And they go inside again to Moore. And Ricky's now in Auburn territory at about the uh, Tiger 47. That's another five yards. One thing about the Auburn defense, when you play with so much of motion, Steve, and you sat on the field as much as Auburn has, you have a tendency to wear down just a little bit. They played with such emotion, it's just hard to keep going at that pace. I like to stay with Moore. And he's inside the 45 to the 43. Earlier today, Marino was intercepted four times by Penn State, and the, the Lions beat the Panthers 48 to 14. Stunning score. Notre Dame beaten by Miami yesterday, 37 to 15. Florida winning today. 3rd down in the yard. Lewis goes outside to Ginyard. And Ginyard has the first down, and the ball comes loose. Auburn says, we've got it, and they do. Tim Drinker comes up for the ball from his cornerback position, so it looked like Alabama was on a roll. And they turn it over at 3.08 to go in the third quarter. And a score tied at 14. Watch here, you'll see 24 get around the corner for a good size gain before hit. And out comes the football. Right here. And Brinkard covered it. And here's Auburn with the ball now. And uh, Ginyard was Alabama's 10th ball carrier. The football is at the Auburn 33. First down for the Tigers. And inside goes George Peoples again. Buford is in there at quarterback. Tennessee defeated Vanderbilt 38 to 34. Commodores were a problem for a lot of folks this year. 28-24 Boston College. Going back to Vanderbilt, they could throw the football seat and had a fine passing attack. Southern Mississippi getting back on the winning track after being upset last week by Louisville. It's second down at about five, and here's Buford outside the James. Bad pitch. Lionel James cannot get away. Down he goes at the 35. Houston rolling over Rice today, 40 to three. The Yeomans Cougars going to the Sun Bowl. Oklahoma beating Oklahoma State 27 to three, and they will play Houston in the Sun Bowl. Oh. Here's a turnover, Alabama. Four fumbles, lost three, one interception. Auburn, two interceptions. Third down and eight now for the Tigers. Sullivan, ball batted down. I don't know if he's batted down so much as he just nailed Robbie Jones uh, right in the face mask with it. Once again, the Alabama defense took the field after the turnover. Turned Auburn back, forcing the kick. Bollinger, the punter. Jones, the receiver. Again, Alabama has 10 men at the line of scrimmage. Pressure just barely gets it away. And Jones fumbles again. Auburn's got the ball.
Mike Hicks recovers the football for the Auburn Tigers. He hit the ball up into the wind. It's kind of kind of hung there, Frank. Yes, it did. He's kicking into a wind, but still Jones should have caught the ball. He was trying to nurse it in. He was too careful, and the ball came right out. Hicks, the center, recovered it. And the Tigers are in business. First down, the pitch to the wide side, and it is Willie Howell running into the boundary, and the penalty flag is on the field. Auburn's ball at the Alabama 33. Holding on Auburn. That's a big one versus the illegal use of the hands or the pushing. You know, those, Joey Jones, number four, the safety man, really it's shocking that he has fumbled two punts. He's the best pass receiver that Alabama's had in a couple years. Great hands. Has done a good job before as we listen to the penalty. Holding. Holding. Offense. Holding. Really a surprise. Ball moves back to the 42. First down at about 20. Hobby gives to Lionel James. And James is caught by Al Blue. Sophomore from Maitland, Florida, as he gets it back down to around 37. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football will come to you out of the Orange Bowl in Miami with Howard Frank and Don. The Philadelphia Eagles of the NFC East, the Miami Dolphins of the AFC East, 9 Eastern time. It's a big ball game for both those clubs. Second down to about 14. Bobby sets up the throw, goes over the middle. The pass is caught by Carroll. Tommy Carroll makes the catch at the Alabama 23. Carroll, number 84, is going right in behind the linebackers. Hobby lays the ball with good touch right over the linebacker's head. As you see, Parrott and Blue, number 34, come in and make the play, but Car Carroll had good possession of the ball, kept the ball in his grasp, even though he was searched by two men. Two Alabama players. About 14 yards on the carry, but it's uh, not quite 14 because we're about a foot short of the first down. Third one for Auburn of the Alabama. See the time remaining in the third quarter. Third down and about a foot. Got good movement behind Charlie Garnum and Bob Hicks, the left guard and center. Well, Alabama says, uh, let's bring the chain on and check it to make sure. They have that privilege and they exercise it. 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. First down. So the clock remains stopped until the chain is put in place. Let's see if Auburn can hustle here and get off a couple of plays. The clock is now going. Buford is in at quarterback. They're working into the wind. Auburn will have the win, what little there is in the final quarter. Buford coming out behind some blocking and turns it back in and goes down. Penalty flag goes down with it. Calling a penalty on number 85 of Auburn. Ed West, the tight end. The tackle was made by Russ Wood. Oh, look on the right side of your screen, lower right, number 85, West, the tight end, trying to block number 96 of Alabama. Randy Edwards, defensive tackle. You see he's got him right in the back, clipping all the way. Number 85 blocking on number 96, Randy Edwards. Auburn now, seven flags, 69 yards. Alabama, two, 15 yards. Ball comes back to the Alabama 39, 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. Still first down and long, long, long for 
Auburn as uh, George Peoples runs it off the right side and gets it back down to the 33 and the third quarter is over. The score is tied at 14 14. We'll continue after this commercial message and a word from our local station. Well here's your final 15 minutes of the traditional between Alabama and Auburn. They are tied 14 14 Auburn with the ball at the Alabama 33 the second down and 20 Joe Sullivan is the quarterback for the Tigers. Sullivan gets blocking, goes back the other way with it, hits Lionel James with it. Thomas Boyd runs him down and knocks him out of bounds, and a penalty flag is thrown, and it's going to go against Alabama. Thomas Boyd, number 90, was a linebacker covering the halfback across the backfield, James. Boyd had great speed as we look at the stats for the first three quarters. Look how even they are. Time of possession, 22-29, 22-31. How close can you be? Except the fumble by Alabama, the turnovers, but Alabama, Auburn's defense, look at this. Only 164 yards total offense, and Alabama has been averaging 380 again. Both defenses have played extremely well. It is Auburn's ball, third down. And a half a yard near the Alabama 13. Houston's the quarterback. Goes outside to James. James is out of bounds. That's the five. First and goal to go, Auburn. Remember, Paul Bryant with a win today passes Amos Alonzo Stagg. A young man who was his assistant coach at Alabama for nine years, Pat Dye, with a, in his first year at Auburn, is threatening now to regain the lead over his old coach. Ken Hobby is in at quarterback. First and goal from the five. Peoples is your fullback, and Hobby keeps it, and down he goes. Mike Pitts was right there to make the stop on him. One thing that if you follow college football, you know Alabama's defense can really rise to the occasion when they are backed up to the goal line. I saw Penn State run six plays from the one yard line and didn't score two or three weeks, two weeks ago. When they have to go in one time, keep a throw for it. I don't believe they can inch it up. It's at the seven now after the two yard loss, second down and goal. Bobby gives it to Peoples, he's back to the five. Keith, I think we should remember and recall that on this part of the field, Auburn was stopped. The kicker missed the field goal from the right hash mark. They were here again in the first half. They threw a pass. Wilcox intercepted. Auburn has had four scoring opportunities and gone away empty. Third and goal from the five. Peoples back toward the center of the field to about the three. Now here comes Del Greco. I think that Pat Dye was going for the field goal as he ran the ball on third down and five, which is not a running down unless you're trying to get the ball in front of the goal post for the field goal. A little bit of a surprise call. All right, Del Greco has missed from 25, missed from 43. Missed from 22, and now this is a 19-yarder. The kick is good this time. And Auburn is in the lead, 17 to 14, with 12 minutes and 58 seconds to play in a game that has history all over it. Al Del Greco, a sophomore from Coral Gables, Florida, obviously elated. The opportunity to put his team into the lead 17 to 14, and that's how he reacted when he saw the ball go through the upright. Now, Alabama will receive the kickoff. In the last seven possessions, Alabama has fumbled it four times. They have been intercepted twice, and they've pulled a touchdown. Joey Jones settles under the kickoff at the five. 
and he is ridden out at the 24 by Jeff Jackson. You've got 12 minutes and 52 seconds to play in the ball game. That's really surprising for an Alabama football team this late in the season. That many turnovers. Just not a typical characteristic play of a Bear Bryant team. Ricky Moore, Jeff Fagan, Lenny Patrick. Lined up in the wishbone for Alabama behind Walter Lewis. Lewis under pressure. Throws a little pass off trying to get it to Moore. It's an incomplete forward pass. Donnie Humphrey and uh, Zach Hardy were the Auburn people putting the heat on. One thing that we should point out about the wishbone, pass protection has always been the problem since they spend so much time working on the running game. When you get behind in the wishbone and have to throw it's very limited style of play Lenny, uh, uh, Walter Lewis has to leave the game to get a new shirt and Alan Gray replaces him at quarterback for Alabama Ben Ross comes wide to the bottom of the picture Gray goes the other way to the tight side of the field and uh, Greg Carr looked like uh, no it's Danny Sputak Got him for the shoe tops and dumped him out of bounds to make it third down. At about six from the 29. Ted Thomas told Keith uh, this morning, told me this morning that the, Al the Auburn defense was as good as any in the conference, and I believe that he's right. Lewis is back now on third and a long six. Walter's pass in the air is good. And Bendross has a first down out at the 41. And Lewis nailed him right on the numbers with it. Well, that was an excellent throw. Watch Lewis's footwork. He's going to get set, turn, step, and he rifles the ball. Bendross number 88 was out in front of Trinkard number 18. You can see Trinkard is worried about the deep pass. Bendross is making fake deep, turns. The ball has already been thrown. The ball is right on the numbers. Couldn't be intercepted. Fine throw, excellent catch. First down, Alabama, 31 yard line. That's more. This freshman has a lot of promise. Not only does he have a lot of promise, but the Auburn secondary Keith, are some kind of tackle. More 225, got the momentum, the safety man, Harris comes up and turns him back to the Alabama, towards the Alabama goal line. Alabama certainly doesn't want to make any mistakes now. Be sure of what they call. Auburn leading 17 to 14. It's second down and four for Alabama. There well, is in trouble this time. There was good penetration in the middle. It looked like Ben Thomas. Big Ben. Ben Thomas is just a freshman. He's playing in place of Altman, the starting nose guard. Mott, number 58, is trying to block him, but he gets the penetration is what he try to do against the wishbone. Big freshman, 260 pounds, makes the key play. Third down and long. If you don't penetrate against the wishbone, you are whipped. You have no chance of stopping it. First down, you to death. Third down. Here's Lewis on the roll. Man had him by the face mask, and he falls away from that, and here's a late flag as Humphrey comes over. And it looks like Donnie got him by the face mask. Let him go. You've got a holding call against Auburn. Keith, it was a sensational run by Lewis, the quarterback. Four, five, 40-yard speed. Tacked on at the end of the run the penalty that is obviously a first here, down here it is Lewis number 10 has the ball in his left hand number 79 Humphrey slows him up momentarily I guess he grabbed the face mask yep. right there oh. but the actual penalty call is holding not face mask well, let's see if we can detect where the holding is oh yeah number 79 got a hold of his jersey you can see him pull his jersey over and he gets the face mask Keith, now the decision by Pat Thai to go for three on fourth down rather than try to make a touchdown on third down may come back to haunt him. 
Lewis He's open for the touchdown. Ben Goff, touchdown. Keith, he was lined up at tight end. Jesse Bendroff in state two weeks ago. And the old red elephant's able to stay on his bicycle that time. Kim is in for the kick. He hooks it and he gets it in. And Alabama is back on top, leading Auburn by four. Why would you put the top, you slid in and tied in? Because you know the safety man, Downey, is supporting the option play. You get a little more speed with your set receiver instead of crowd the normal tight end. And you can see how far he is in behind Downey for the touchdown. And we'll be right back after this. Seven to play in the ball game. Alabama 21, Auburn 17. Alabama will kick off. Buford is the deep man. He comes across, has a look. It's deep in the end. Oh my goodness, he's coming out. Well, he gets out to about the 19. He was indecisive. He gets back to the 19. Another look at Ben Ross at the tight end. Keith, let's see if we can notice 46. Dormany. Yeah, you can see he's the safety man. He's supporting the option play, and he's beaten very badly on the play. Five yards in behind him is Ben Frost with his great speed, lining up at tight end. A little something special. Bear Bryant works out for a particular defense. Got a man down on the field, an Auburn man, and he's coming out of the ball game. Greg Zip. He was shaken up. He came off the field. All right. From the 19, let's see what Auburn can do with the top hit. Trailing by four points to Hobby. Goes in an option. Out to about the 22. Picked up three yards. And we go inside 10 minutes to play in the ball game as Russ Wood makes the tackle. And the old momentum has shifted again. Very suddenly. Penalty against Auburn. Gave Alabama a first down and a special play for the Auburn defense resulted in a touchdown pass. It's been a day of fierce ebb and flow of emotion. Both teams have had their highs and their lows. They hand it off inside. People's the fullback. He's up to about the 24, maybe the 25. And Eddie Lowe runs into him there and brings him down. People's now 23 carries in the ball game and 139 yards for Auburn. And next Saturday, doubleheader time. Georgia Georgia Tech the Division three championship the Division two semifinals and then Army Navy from the bed in Philly at 345 Eastern time Navy going to the Liberty Bowl this year Buford trying to go down the line on the option can't do it Robbie Jones penetrated and got him locked his arms and he could not deliver to the trailing back Robbie oh, Jones is. number 97 Leading tackler for the Alabama football team this year. Very quick read on the option. Penetrated. Just an outstanding play in a very, very critical situation. Bollinger into punt now for Auburn on fourth down. That's good. Low kick. Of running it back by Daryl White, new man put back there to receive the punt. The number 30 has not been in this ball game except on the kicking team, and all of a sudden he's sent back there to field the punt. This after Joy Jones had fumbled it twice. Well, I think that was a good decision. The confidence that Jones had lost after fumbling twice was too risky to let him try to catch another one, even though he'd had good success all season long. Alabama sets up now on the Auburn side of the field. Exactly where they put it. Big question here. Can the Auburn defense rise to the occasion and force the punt? At the 49 of Auburn. First down, Alabama. 
Lewis at quarterback. That's Lenny Patrick. Can't hold him. Look out. What a tough, tough, determined run by Lenny Patrick. He just don't see any better individual effort than Lenny Patrick, number 25, make on this play. It's the sweet play, which gives him a chance to use his ability. Two good blockers out in front of him. More number 26. It's going to knock Gormley down, Gormley down right there. And you can see Patrick is not giving up, keeping his feet going, cutting back against the grain. Comes close to score. Just a sensational run. Got 32 yards on the carry. Into the middle goes Pagan. And he moves from about the 17 of Auburn to near the 15, where Dan Dickerson makes the stop on him. Lenny Patrick has not had a very good year. As a matter of fact, uh, the Bears don't have a lot of growling at him. He's been in the doghouse. Yes, he's he been, is. Uh, mixed because of some disciplinary problems during the year, but he's coming back, and that was his best run of the season for him, I'm sure. No question. Second down, eight. Patrick again. Touchdown. Goes in their touchdown to build the lead up to 10 points. I want to say this about Lenny Patrick. He's had his problems this year. But here, ladies and gentlemen, in the flash of just seconds, you may very well have seen a moment of character making for a young man. And he's just the sophomore. He was a leading ball carrier last year as a freshman for Alabama. Had the freshman record for Alabama. Patrick got 47 of the 49 yards on the touchdown drive. Kim's kick is good. And it is now Alabama 28 and Auburn 17 with seven minutes and seven seconds to play. If you watch college football, how many times have you seen the pitch play where you toss the ball out to your tailback, let him use his ability, give him the freedom to go all the way. Patrick makes a great run in for the touchdown and we'll be right back after this. I mean that literally. Because Alabama has an 11-point lead, and they un have unquestioned emotion on their side right now. The kick goes skittering out of bounds. That'll cost them five yards, and Sanders will re-kick it. As we line up for the second kickoff, I think we should uh, point out again, Keith, that the Auburn offense is not designed to come from behind. They have not... Uh, uh, got the outstanding passer that you need. They be very limited in trying to, to catch the Alabama team right now. One thing wishbone teams try to avoid is getting too far behind where they have to play catch up football. But that guy is a winner. I want to say that. I mean it. I've known him. I tried to recruit him when he was a high school player before he enrolled at the University of Georgia. They declined the penalty. They will accept the ball where it went out of bounds at the 31. So Auburn with the option exercising it. Accept the football at the 31 and they'll go to work. Down by 11 points and they give it to people. And he gets four to the 35. Rather than give Alabama a chance to kick it deep on them, they decide to take it out at the 31. On the three, three previous kickoffs, they had not gotten it back to the 20. No. Pretty good decision. Second down and six. The quarterback, Javi, keeps it, and he's close to a first down as he gets it out around the 42. They do call it first down Auburn. Wishbone offense, Ethan, as we've said many times, is normally a ball control style of play with big play opportunities. That's what Alabama has done today in a real tough situation. 28-17, Alabama. With two touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. 
Outside it goes to Lionel James. He cuts it back inside. And a good defensive play over there by Tommy Wilcox. A young man from Harahan, Louisiana, who came over to play for the Bears. It's, it's impossible to say just how good a football player Tommy Wilcox is. It's a strong safety. He's just around the football. Bear Bryant thinks he's just a winner, has those winning qualities that you're looking for in a football player. The ball is just over midfield, where it is second down and one. And uh, they try for the first down. They're close to it. I tell you, if Wilcox doesn't get James, he might have traveled. First down for the Tigers at the Alabama 48. Time now on Alabama side at 540 to play in the game. Big day for Bill. Howdy goes outside to James, and James goes out of bounds. Russ Wood, the primary tackler. Coming up on December 28th, it'll be the Tar Heels and the Hogs having at it down in Jacksonville at 9 Eastern time here on ABC. And then on January evening, January 1, it'll be number three, Georgia against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh went into today's game against Penn State, ranked number one, and got clobbered. Second down, about nine. Bobby, no chance, no chance. Sullivan it is, Joe Sullivan. And Mike Pitts, the defensive end, came roaring in the sacking. And that's the first time today. Mike Pitts. Six foot three, 240 pounds, left in. This is his 13th sack of the season. You can see why. Look at him, close the ball. Look at those steps, Keith. And he reaches out with those long arms, and Sullivan goes right to the ground. He just beat the block. Yes, he was so quick. Block had no chance to block. Nine of 72 yards on the 13th sack for Mike Hill. Third down at about 17. As Javi puts it up. Castile and Woods bump together, but no flag. As the pass goes out of bounds, incomplete at 4:41 to play in the ball game. Auburn is going to punt it away. Here, going to punt more might very well here on fourth and 17. Alabama has not played. It's safe the man back to receive the punt. Auburn trying to down it down there, and they got a chance. And they do. Nope, he's on the line. He broke the plane, and it's going to come back to the 20. 53-yard punt. They were so close to getting the ball down on the one. Auburn players are downfield complaining that they had it. But the official right there with them said, no, young man, when you touched the ball, I believe you were standing on the goal line. Boy, Keith, that would have been a great break for Auburn if he could down the ball on the one-foot line. Let's see if we can judge. It appeared from up here that the Auburn players were standing on the one and reached back over the goal plane. He's on the goal well, line. Well, one's there. on the goal line. Let's yeah. see. No. The one that caught it, what they're saying is he broke, broke the, the plane. plane. I don't believe that's the case. The ball has to hit the end zone. Good defensive play by David King on Lenny Patrick. And Patrick is knocked down for a yard loss. Well, that David King has had an outstanding year as a freshman. Leads the team in interceptions as Patrick limped off the field. Number 25, scored the last touchdown. It'll be second down, Alabama. 11, Alabama. <laughs> Baruch in there replacing Patrick. The ball goes to Fagan. Fagan coming around the left side. Almost lost the ball. Looked like the first Auburn man that made contact with him. That ball sort of got a little loose. 
Bob Harris hit him first. Well, that would be the worst thing that could happen to Alabama. The best thing that could happen to Auburn would be a fumble at right now. Clock is running at 3.45 to play in the ball game. I promise you the quarterback in the huddle is saying this to the team. Hold on the football. Don't let them knock it out. All we want is possession. If we can't make the first down, we'll punt it away. Walter Lewis, Ken Coley, started the second half. The first voice has played since. This is Caruth. And Caruth goes head over heels as Bob Harris takes the legs from under him. And Alabama will punt it at 315 to play in the game and leading 28 to 17. Well, we've enjoyed the two days of football we've been able to bring you yesterday, Miami and uh, Notre Dame from the Orange Bowl, and today, Alabama and Auburn from Birmingham. And 11 blue shirts on the line. They're going after it. And he gets it out of there. And no roughing. And the ball takes a soft bounce. It takes an Auburn bounce. And the Tigers are going to get it back at about the 38. It was a 38-yard punt with 249 to play in the game. This could be Auburn's last chance. First down from their own 38. Akani steps up, wants to go to Woods, does go at Woods. And they give him the catch. Yes, they do. My goodness. Made a pretty good catch of that thing. He had to just go right down to the ground and scoop it. Let's see it again. Hobby number 13 just going to roll to the left, trying to get closer to his receiver. He does have plenty of time. Then throws the ball very low to Woods. Woods goes to his knees, watches it in, pulls it in for the reception. And the ball is at the Alabama 48. First down for Auburn. 2.26 to play in the game. Joe Sullivan, the quarterback. Wants to throw it. He's in trouble. He goes down. Jackie Klein, Dick Jr., 266 pounder. The most valuable player for the ball game today for Alabama, Jesse Bendross. Two touchdowns, three catches, 76 yards. George Peoples had the biggest day of his career. 24 carries, 144 yards. Hobby's pass is good to so Tommy Carroll. Down at the Alabama 35. Another first down for the Tigers. Carroll, 38 to play. Yeah, Carroll is the wide receiver. Alabama obviously is playing deep with their cornerback, expecting the linebackers to cover the short passes. Wilcox, number 15, is trying to get in there as Jones, number 97, but it's too late. Up the middle goes George Peoples with the ball. And he goes from the 35 to the 26 of Alabama. He's got nine yards on the carry. He's adding to his total. Now at 153 yards. 108 to play in the game. Out of the eye this time. For the first down, George Peoples. And he's got it. I'm out over. They have two remaining at 56 seconds to play in the game. The score, Alabama 28 and Auburn 17. <laughs> 56 seconds to play. Alabama leading by 11 points. If they hold on to win this ball game, and I see no real reason now why they won't, this man, Paul William Bryant, becomes the winningest college football coach in history. Hobby's pass is away. And it is incomplete. 49 seconds to play. There he is. As I said at the top of the show, and I want to say it again, that all of us of the coaching profession that are of this era believe in that man, believe that he is the best coach of our time, if not the greatest coach of all time. We are proud and happy for him. And very pleased that one of our generation is going to set the record, Keith. It's been a pleasure to see it happen over so many years. Sullivan to throw. And he is 
hit behind the line of scrimmage by Russ Wood and dropped back on the 31. Now, 38 seconds, the clock is running, and Auburn spends another timeout. They have one remaining. At the same time, and I am sure Paul Bryant would want it said, due respect should be paid. Played, paid to is the former student. And I think any young coach who goes in there as an assistant to Bear is, in effect, a student. His football team played well today. They certainly have. Made some mistakes, but their defense did not get discouraged. They have confidence. Ken Donahue, one of the great defensive coaches in America. As we look again at Bear when he was saying to himself, gosh, I'll be glad when this is over. Oh, I'll be glad when this game is over. Look at the face. He's been through many a battle like this, Keith. To put his record in perspective, the nearest coach, active coach to his 315 wins is Bob Blackman with 162. Up at Cornell now. The pass is away. Could be picked off. It is. And it's Heron again. And he's got a lot of daylight. They finally get him out of bounds. Up on the 44 with 23 seconds to play in the football game. That will do it. Third interception off Hobby in the ball game today. And so you've been privileged today to watch a man make history in American sports. Oh, little Benny Perrin, number 23, has been a fine football player. As we look again at Bear Bryant, Paul Bear Bryant, great football player at Alabama. They will run out the clock. As Lewis comes up to take the snap, Auburn has one timeout remaining. I don't know if they'll call it or not. Keith, it's amazing. The Bear Bryant did not become a head coach until he was 32 years old because of World War II, his certain time in service. The game is over. The man has made history. 315 wins. This is a basic credo of Paul Bryant. If you believe in yourself and have dedication and pride and never quit, you'll be a winner. The price of victory is high, but so are the rewards. Humanity moves slowly along the playing area, and we're waiting for our man Vern Lundquist to reach him to talk to him. There was a credo that was told to me by Fritz Chrysler, who played for Amos Alonzo Stagg at the University of Chicago. And it goes like this Leave me no compromise on things half done, keep me with a stern and stubborn pride. And when at last the fight is won, God, keep me still unsatisfied. And there is no satisfaction in a man like Paul Bryant. Of that I am sure. Because you never find satisfaction among restless men and you never find leaders unless they are the restless men. You know, Keith, a lot of people generally love that guy. He's got more friends around the country. As I said earlier, all the coaches of our profession we admire and respect him so very, very much. What a moment. Sixty-eight years old. Still strong and active and a winner from the very for the crowd to move into that area underneath the stands where Vern Lundquist will attempt to get to the coach. It will not be easy.
I guess that covers it. Says it all. The Auburn Tigers, obviously outmanned, fought them to the fourth quarter before Alabama finally locked it. And now let's see if we can join Vern Lundquist. There has been so much conversation leading up to this moment. There's so much emotion right now. Can you possibly put what this means in perspective? Well, the greatest thing about it for me is that uh, offensively we did nothing the first day. If our defense played well, uh, had one long run. Uh, the second half, I thought we played real well. It looked like a good Lord wasn't going to let us win there for a while, and uh, then I was tremendously proud of them coming back and taking charge, and and one of the greatest games they've ever played, and we still got a chance. Did the emotion surrounding the history that has been set now have an effect on your kids in the first half? Of the I don't have any idea. I don't have any idea. I don't, that don't have any effect on me now. I'm just thinking they'll win the game, and maybe two hours from now I will or something. Coach, uh, this is 315. Can you remember anything from number one? I can remember a lot from number one. Two of the guys that played number one were here today, three or four of them. Well, it was a great honor for you. I know to have so many of your former coaches sure and players here. I'm tremendously proud of all of them. I'm real thankful to have the privilege of being associated with all of them. I don't mean just players. I mean people, the great guys that have gone like Carney Lazarus, Frank Molden, people like that have been so much to me. Coach, congratulations to you again. Bear Bryant, Keith. All right, Vern. Now he's gone to the locker room where he's going to insist on having a few moments with his Alabama football team. Well, the crowd now is starting to file out of Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. As Alabama has defeated Auburn by a score of 28 to 17. And I would think that this man who wears the checkered hat probably had more people talking about him and interested in his activities today than almost any other sportsman I can think of. The face uh, sometimes appears that it's carved out of granite. And I know from personal experience, the will is made of steel in the man. We're anticipating a call from President Reagan this vacation home in Santa Barbara, California, where he is spending the Thanksgiving holidays. We're anticipating that he will make a phone call to Coach Paul Bryant. We'd like to be in the locker room to hear part of that conversation, if we can. And that's why we are staying here for just a few more moments to see whether or not we will be able to bring you that conversation. Because President Ronald Reagan himself, a former sports announcer, and I would suspect, I would suspect if he watched the game today, he might very well like to have been sitting right where I have been sitting. Because it's, it's a rare thing to watch a man step into history alone, occupy his own place. And the thing about Paul Bryant, he is not through. He is not through. He has no intention of stepping aside and quitting coaching. He's going off to the Cotton Bowl to play a very tough football team from the University of Texas. And he'll be back next year. So it looks like we're going to have to leave before the president's call comes through. But you've seen it. We hope you've enjoyed it. As Paul William Bear Bryant is now on 315 college football games. The final score, Alabama 28, Auburn 17. Limp provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through and promotion will be paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what Friendly Skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports recognized around the world.